But first, sell up. That's the ominous warning to homeowners by the Reserve Bank Governor. In other words, things aren't getting better, they're getting worse. Now, owning your own home is a dream for many Aussies, like myself, you, your children, your grandchildren. But it doesn't fill you with much hope that Labor has a firm grip on the economy when Michelle Bullock warns families would have to make quite painful changes in the near future. This includes things like cutting back on their spending to the more essential items, trading down to lower quality goods and services, dipping into their savings or working extra hours. And some may ultimately have to make the very difficult choice to sell their home. Yeah, cost of living remains the number one issue in this country. It has not gone away. So when you hear warnings like that, it's impossible to get your head around the ambitious tone by the Prime Minister today, who will have us believe that all is OK. The Reserve Bank undertake its work. They do so independently of government. Uh, we respect the work that they do. Uh, they're in charge of uh, monetary policy. We're in charge of fiscal policy. Uh, we've been busy making sure that we put that downward pressure on inflation. He is kidding himself. And if the RBA is independent of government, as he says, and free to make his own, its own decisions, well, perhaps his treasurer didn't quite get that memo. If you ask Jim Chalmers, the crisis is the RBA's fault. He's blaming the central bank for smashing households with higher interest rates during a cost of living crisis. And I've got to say, I had to laugh today when in strolled one of Chalmers' close mentors, former Treasurer Wayne Swan, who claims the central bank is, quote, punching itself in the face. Well, I think uh, the Reserve Bank is putting economic dogma over rational economic decision making, hammering households, hammering mums and dads with higher rates, causing a collapse in spending and driving the economy backwards doesn't necessarily deal with the principal uh, pushes when it comes to higher inflation. Now, numbers have never been Wayne Swan's strong suit, whatever <laughs> happened to that surplus he promised while Treasurer for six years. So, look, let's crunch the numbers for Albanese and Chalmers and get to the facts. Because this week, the economy grew by a measly 0.2% for the June quarter, effectively its worst performance since the end of the 1990s recession. And GDP per capita was down for the sixth consecutive quarter, six falling 0.4%. Now, think about this. Labor has been in power since May 2022. So for most of Albanese's prime ministership, the economy has gone in the wrong direction. Labor is sending us backwards. And it starts with record government spending fueling Inflation, which hit an equal record 11.8% of GDP last quarter. The only time federal government spending has been this large was in the early stages of the COVID pandemic. And at the same time, of course, Big Australia keeps getting bigger. A record 1.1 million migrants have come to this country since Labor came to office. It has added to the housing crisis and, again, inflation. And nobody voted for a big Australia, yet here we are. And if you take a look at Labor's cost of living CV, well, it speaks for itself. Population growth is masking a per capita recession fuelled by those record migration numbers, record government spending. Power bills have risen more than 20% and we are all still waiting for that alleged $275 in energy relief. We've seen record petrol prices, Rents are about 8.5% higher than they were last year. Housing affordability is at its worst in more than two decades. Building approvals are at 20-year lows. There's been 13 interest rate hikes and persistent high inflation. And, of course, the list goes on. All at the expense of families and all at the expense of household budgets, despite, of course, this election mandate. We will put in place mechanisms that provide cost of living relief. Under Labor, you'll have a government which cares about cost of living and has plans to deal with it. I'll build people's living standards up. A better future with real plans to address the cost of living. And to ease the pressure 
that too many Australians are feeling. Taking pressure off the cost of living. Of addressing cost of living issues. To take pressure off living standards. Meaningful help with your cost of living. Meaningful help with your cost of living. Meaningful help with your cost of living. Yeah, it all really meant nothing because the RBA says it is getting worse and has kept rate hikes on the agenda. It's actually high inflation that is really causing trouble for people and it's causing trouble for the most vulnerable. If we don't get inflation down, it's bad for everyone, absolutely everyone. If inflation doesn't come down, then it might be that the best medicine is in fact that we have to... Um, end up putting more restriction into the, into the economy. Yeah, it makes Jim Chalmers and now his mentor Wayne Swan's comments that it's the RBA's fault even more comical. It's prompted this intervention by former Reserve Bank board member Warwick McKibben, who says to draw attention when you're probably two-thirds of the problem is a little problematic. You want to think that the government and the central bank are working together in the same direction for the benefit of the country to make those sorts of comments suggested that maybe there's some other agendas at work. Exactly. Michelle Bullock is not going to give in to Labor's political timeline and Labor's timeline between now and the next election to make sure the figures look in tip-top shape. And if Albo and Chalmers were confident in their handling of the cost of living crisis and the economy, you'd think they wouldn't have to blame everyone else for their own mess. So as the party continues its reckless economic trajectory of record spending, immigration, disastrous renewable rollouts, high, higher power prices and all the while igniting a war with the RBA, we are all once again poorer for it.